Assalamu alaikum guys, so I want to share a video clip with you that a friend sent me yesterday It's from the Joe Rogan podcast and it's where he shares a story, an amazing conversion story inshallah So let's watch it together and then I'll share my thoughts with you guys inshallah You know John Bernthal, he was talking about this guy that uh, he interviewed He was going to blow up a mosque He had this hate of Muslims after coming back from overseas, from serving And he was going to blow up a mosque And he went in there and he met this woman who welcomed him into the mosque And he was still totally intent on blowing her up, blowing everybody up She invited him over her home for dinner. He was still intent on it. So he gets to know her and his family, completely changes course, becomes a devout Muslim. Wow! And then talked about the whole experience. So that's a really interesting story, subhanAllah. You know, and it is amazing. And it's, it's, it's just one example of such stories that we hear all the time. Now, the first thing we need to recognize is that this is what Islam teaches. This is what Muslims should be like. And unfortunately, we live... Uh, in a time where there's a lot of emphasis on certain aspects of Islam and certain other aspects which are equally as important are overlooked by Muslims, especially young Muslims. And in one such area is characteristics, manners, etiquettes, the way we behave with other human beings, with other, you know, creation creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to show the best of characteristics, especially in the da'wah. Right when we, because remember when you when you're a Muslim and you're a practicing Muslim and you look like a Muslim, you are representing whether you like it or not. You're representing the religion, the way of life that you follow. Now people are therefore going to look at you, and in many cases, which may not be the right thing, but in many cases, people are going to pass judgments on your way of life, on Islam, based on you. So it's an added responsibility, right? And you have to therefore present yourself not in a False way, not in a in a made up way, but in a way that Islam encourages you to be. Look at the example of the Prophet, peace be upon him. His mercy, his compassion, his his empathy towards others, his genuine concern and desire for others to be guided. We have to have this concern. We have to try to have this concern, especially in the da'wah. Now, of course, you know, you know, da'wah. There is an element of the da'wah which is through actions as well. If you represent and you you behave like a Muslim, this is going to be positive da'wah for the non-Muslims. But even in the direct da'wah, and this is something we cover in our course at Ira in our da'wah training course. Even in the direct da'wah, you need to display. You have to display the best characteristics and mannerisms. You have to be kind, gentle, soft. You have to be caring. You know, you have to be empathetic. Like I said. You know, you have to assume people are ignorant, and and why, you know, why would you assume any anything else? Because if you look at the general narrative and the ideas that are out there, even today about Islam, a lot of them would agitate anyone if that was, you know, if they believe that to be the case. But we know Islam is not that, and you know, it's not as bad as it used to be, say five, ten years ago. But still, there are loads of misconceptions. There are loads of false beliefs out there in regards to Islam. So therefore, we have to assume people are ignorant, be the bigger person, and just, just be gentle in our approach. You know, one of the greatest evidences for this is in the Qur'an. And, and I find this story is, is a profound story. And if we really understand one of the lessons here, our da'wah will change. The way we engage with other non-Muslims would change for the better. And this is the story of Musa alayhi salam and Fir'aun. Now in the Quran we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends Musa to Fir'aun, right? Now think about this. Musa alayhi salam is one of the best of human beings, one of the best humans to ever walk the surface of this earth. Pharaoh, on the other hand, arguably is one of the worst, if not the worst human being ever to have lived. Now Allah is sending one of the best of humans to one of the worst of humans. And just before Allah sends Musa alayhi salam off, he gives Musa alayhi salam a piece of advice. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Musa to use soft and gentle speech with Pharaoh. Right? Why? So that he may wake up, essentially. Right? He may realize the truth. Golan layyina, soft, gentle speech. Now think about this, guys. If one of the best of human beings is being told to... Be soft and gentle in his approach when he's engaging with one of the worst of human beings. And he's being told this by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. Then what excuse do we have 
to be aggressive or rude or talk down to other people out there. Especially in the context of the da'wah, it makes no sense. Remember, it's about winning hearts and minds. And that's only going to happen if you can speak to someone on a level with genuine human concern and compassion. It's not going to happen if you are talking down to someone, screaming at someone, trying to overpower someone, undermine someone. It's not going to happen, right? So keep this in mind. It's very important. Yes, in the da'wah, there's two, look, there's two parts. There's the message and then there is, if you like, the mechanism, right? The message is only going to be delivered effectively if you, as the mechanism, do it properly. I'll give you a story. A sheikh shared a story with me once, and it's a profound story, and it helped me remember this specific point. You know, he mentioned that there was a, a poor man in a village, a simple man, and one day he had a really bad earache, so he went to the doctor. And he goes to the doctor and he tells the doctor, I have an earache. So the doctor checks his ear and he looks inside his ear and he finds he has an infection. So as the doctor does, he gives him a, a course of antibiotics and he tells him, look, take this three times a day for seven days and you'll be fine. So the guy goes away, comes back the next morning and he says, doctor, the pain is getting worse. So the doctor's thinking, OK, he probably didn't understand what I said. So let me, let me explain it to him. You want to take the antibiotics three times a day, morning, afternoon, evening and give it a couple of days and you'll get better. So the guy goes off again. Guess what? Third day, third morning, he returns again. And he says, doctor, the pain is just, just unbearable now. So the doctor's thinking now, it's been three days. He should have been getting a bit better if he's taking the medicine. So the doctor decides to take another look inside his ear. When he looks inside his ear, guess what he finds? The antibiotics stuffed right into his ear. And obviously, that's going to make the pain worse. It's going to make the infection worse. And the moral of the story is that the medicine is only effective if it's administered properly. Let me repeat that. The medicine is only effective if it's administered properly. Now, how does this apply to our context of the da'wah? The medicine is Islam. We know it's the truth from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know it's the truth that's going to set people free. It's going to bring joy and happiness and peace and tranquility to people. It's going to wake people up to the reality of life. That's the message. We have it. The mechanism, the medicine, or the delivery mechanism of the medicine is you, is me, right? Unless we administer the medicine properly, it's not going to have the, the, the desired effect, right? So it's, it's vitally important that when you're giving da'wah, that you really check your character, check the way you're behaving, check the way you engage with people, refine yourself from this perspective, and then deliver the message with compassion, with love, with clarity. And that doesn't mean you know, become, you know, a pushover or anything like that. No, there, you know, you can put your point forward. You can make your stand, but you don't have to do that being rude. There's a difference. You can be assertive without being rude or aggressive, right? And there's, in most cases, you won't need to apply that. In most cases, when you speak to people, they just genuinely want to learn. They want to know, you know, they want to know what you have to share. So connect with people, share the message of Islam, and keep and a specific focus on your manners and characteristics so i just wanted to leave you with that today i thought that was a very powerful video which you know helps us elaborate upon this particular point let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and i'll speak to you guys next time assalamualaikum